package here. Um, I don't remember uh, what the name of the company was, but uh, I believe this was ordered from Newegg. Let's take a look to see what we have here. Exactly what I th was thinking it was. This is a uh, vehicle camera, a dash cam, if you will. Um, I've been looking at these for a while. Uh, this one was very, very, well, I'm going to call it cheap because let's face it, it was 30 bucks. It was on sale at Newegg. Uh, no name. Uh, not very high quality. You know, they claim it's 1080p for the front. And uh, I think it's a VGA, they said 640 by 40 or something I, uh, for the back. Not very good. You're, you're not going to read license plates with it. Uh, there's more to resolution, uh, sorry, more to picture quality than resolution. And this is no exception. And I just bought this to test. This is what happened. Um, my wife was recently in an accident. Uh, she was driving down a road. She had the right of way. She was in the middle of the intersection waiting to take a left. So she was in the middle of the intersection. And uh, when the cars finished coming, you know, her way, she started to take her left. Someone coming up the street had her stop sign. She didn't have a stop sign or a light or anything anyway. And at some point, they kind of did one of these. The guy got out of the vehicle, was aggressive towards my wife, said, you were speeding. That's lie number one. Um, that's being dishonest because she was at a full stop a couple of seconds earlier. And she was just barely into her turn or somewhat into her turn, her left turn. So she was taking a left turn onto the street. He was coming out, not sure which way he was going. One would think left, one would think right. Second thing he said was that uh, he was at the, a stop sign. That that's, that's, can't be true because when they hit, he was already past the stop sign in the crosswalk because it uh, was a marked crosswalk. Um, so, and he said he was distracted, a uh, family thing, and I'm sympathetic towards that. However, they found my wife at, th at, at fault, which I don't understand. She was into the intersection. She was already into her turn. Uh, he accused her of stealing. Uh, so, I'm sorry. He accused her of speeding. We know that's false. He said he was at the stop sign. We know that wasn't true. But they found her at fault for whatever reason. I don't know why. And I had been looking at these a while back. And I didn't buy it, and I really regret it. Um, I bought this. If if it's if if I find it useful, I can always go and buy uh, a better one for her vehicle. I want it front and rear. She's got a Nissan Rogue, which has the surround cameras, four cameras. I know they're not high resolution, but it's too bad you can't tap into those. All we need to see is who was in the right and who was in the wrong. And from what I was told and what other people said, she was in the right. But the insurance company, uh, I don't know what what they told her. Minimal damage, you know. Uh, you know, like 800 bucks and the, the no massive you know maybe a buff out maybe needs to be reclared or something but still uh, it's not fair so I'm gonna uh, do an unboxing with this uh, sorry for the rant I'm gonna do an unboxing uh, and then uh, either later in this video or in a separate video I'm gonna show the installation now this is a, a rear view camera mount type and uh, one thing I've heard about these is the mirror itself is kind of blued and it's not as clear as the uh, rear view mirror in your car. She has a very simple rear view mirror. It doesn't have any controls, nothing on it. So I figured this was an easy way to mount it and uh, you know, it doesn't look too out of the ordinary. Well, so hopefully that's the case. So let's open this up and let's take a look at what we got here. Can't expect much for $30, but uh, here's the rear view mirror and that's actually upside down. Is the rear view mirror. Um, and there is a protective film on here. I'm going to leave it on just to protect it from now. Uh, I don't know if the film is blue. Where's the tab? Pull tab for this. There it is. Maybe I'll pull it off just a little bit. Come on. Work with me here. Yeah, even though when I'm tearing it off, it's tearing, it has a bluish tint to it. And you can actually also, it's very obvious, you can see the screen in here. Uh, I thought it was going to be more uh, or less recognizable 
Uh, she may not like this. I don't know. She, it might be too blue. It might be hard to see at nighttime, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, so let's take a look at the buttons here. It looks like this is a, uh, a, well, let's bring it up to the camera. We'll take a look. Okay, this looks more like a power button. This has uh, four checkerboards on it right here. Well, like four squares, and I'm guessing that means front, rear, both. One, uh, the front is the main picture, the rear is the main picture, whatever, maybe use as a backup camera. Uh, that looks like it could be a brightness. There's uh, forward and backwards buttons for uh, either the menu or to go through pictures or whatever. And this says OK. So I assume it's a selection, but this could also be that manual uh, button. If there's an emergency, you press it and it keeps, you know, like 10 seconds before and after the accident. Um, you know, and this does have a G sensor, it doesn't have GPS. Again, it's 30 bucks. What do you want? It's probably going to be terrible. But I need to see for myself um, what kind of a difference this could, have, could make or could have made. You got to protect yourself these days. Uh, so on the back, um, there's this, it's, this is plastic, but it has sort of like a pattern, a grid pattern, probably to grip the front of your headlight. Um, it's got the 1080p camera. It does tilt left and right as well as up and down I've read that some of these only go up and down so that's that's good and on the top here you will see uh, the USB mini not micro for something like this I don't mind the mini I think it, uh, it's more resilient connector it's not gonna break as easy if you're pulling this out all the time although this style I doubt you would uh, it also has an area for the sim card I don't think this has a SIM card. I think I got a 16 lane around or maybe a 32 or something like that. There's also another hole in the middle. Looks like a, I don't know, uh, a headphone jack. I'm going to assume right now that that is for the rear camera. Uh, on the back, there is a microphone as well as a reset button. Okay, I'm going to sit this right here since there's room for that. Take out the packaging. Uh, Quick guide, 4.3 inch HD rear view dual camera, uh, supports motion detect. So this has a battery in it and I believe the way this works is, um, well, I don't want to say I believe the way this works, I'm just looking at this right here, uh, is this will actually work when the power is off to the car, it uses some sort of motion detect. It has a cigarette lighter adapter. Um, let's open that up. Uh, this is actually a cheap one. Uh, it doesn't have a spot where you can plug in an extra device. Most cars only have one device you can plug in. So that might be a problem. I may have to do something or this cord or something. We'll have to figure that out. But the USB cable is a uh, right angle, which in this case, it may not matter for the uh, for the car camera so with this that way this is going to go off towards the driver's side so that's fine because that's where the fuse box is if I decide to hardwire it um, you also have these little rubber straps and basically the way this works is you hook it on wrap it around your rear view mirror and strap it although I would think you'd want to start from the bottom and the only reason why I'm saying that is you're not going to see the slack hanging below the window. I'd rather have the slack above the mirror. Um, you could probably also trim it down if you want, but that's kind of the way it works. You can see that there. So let's take that off, get that out of our way. And we got a package here. Some bare wire, so maybe this is a hard wire kit in here too. So, okay, that's what it is. So you have here is your uh, camera. Uh, what I don't know, I'm gonna have to check and read up on it. Is if the this will you can change the settings if you have to mount this outside upside down, right side up. I believe this is a uh, weatherproof as much as it can be for that price, uh, so you can mount it outside uh, in a truck. Maybe you could put it in the uh, the trailer hitch, you know, right through that small trailer hitch hole if you don't use your trailer hitch. Uh, and this is just a, a connector. I assume that gives it power and uh, video. And here is the cable right here I see some uh, wondering if there's two wires, sets of wires in here because what I see is a cable for the uh, camera itself there's four conductors there so it must be for power 
But I also see some bare wires here. And it makes me wonder why. So let's pull this out a little bit. Uh, okay, I can see I already don't like this. Because what I see here is um, power leads. And they're kind of short. So what I'm guessing, and I don't know this for sure, is they're expecting you to mount this outside, and I'm guessing this will connect to your uh, backup lights. So when this receives power, it tells the camera, hey, this is in reverse, put the rev reverse on your rear view camera. I don't care about that. My wife has a surround view where it shows four cameras around the car, so that's not gonna be needed. So what, another thing it tells me is how good is this gonna work inside, because I don't think I'm gonna get, mount this outside the vehicle. To me, it doesn't make sense. But we'll see what happens. All right, what else do we got here in the package? We got a couple of little screws, and that would be my guess to mount this. I would never make holes in my vehicle. Well, I used to back in the day when I didn't care, but now I kind of do. But also has uh, an adhesive mount of some sort. Doesn't say 3M on it. I'm sure it'll be just fine. If it was inside the car, outside the car, I kind of question that. What else do we got here? That's it. Let's see what some of the information says. So based on the stuff we saw here, let's take this out, back out, and we'll just go back over the settings that I was guessing on earlier. And uh, yep, on off. So why would there be an on off switch? When you're in the car, maybe it's running, you want to shut it off, you're doing something I don't know. Uh, it was a menu key, a mode key, and okay, up and down. And again, all the other ones that we, we spoke of. This also has a speaker in it, which I didn't notice before. Speakers right here, and I pointed out the microphone. Um, unless that's a speaker. That could be vent holes. Let's see what the instructions say. They're so dark, it is hard to tell. Okay, yep. Yeah. So, this is the speaker. Again, this is not high quality. I don't know how long this is going to last. I don't know if it's going to even work out of the box, which actually brings up a good point. Hold on to your horses there. What do we have here? That's a little power supply I built probably back in the 80s. Worked at Radio Shack, so a 12 volt, 5 amp uh, with a big cap back there. Used to have a regulator on it for another purpose, but the output of the transformer wasn't high enough. I think it was only 12.6 volts. Got something loose in there, but I know this works. Something probably a piece of plastic broke. Power button, amp meter right there. So we're gonna be able to see the power drawer on this. And uh, there used to be a fuse on the back here, but I kept popping them when uh, it would spike up with certain things. So I found that the circuit breaker worked out better for me. And of course, the cigarette plugs here. So let's give this a test. Let's see what kind of power this thing draws, shall we? So normally the first thing you would do is uh, make all your connections. So I am going to plug in the Camera. We're going to need a SIM card for this. Uh, sorry, not a SIM card, an SD card for this. Uh, so I'm going to go grab an SD card. Okay, it's a 4 gig card. It's probably class 4 or class 6. I don't know. It might complain about that, but uh, I'm just going to uh, go with it and hope for the best. Uh, what else do we need to connect here? I need to connect this cable for power. And that's interesting. So, come on, there you go. All right. And we need to plug in the camera to the other end of this cable. Where are you? There you are. And man, is that small. It's probably keyed. It's just so small to tell. 
Yeah, it's keyed. That's going to be a point of failure. And uh, I guess I could try to uh, connect this positive negative to the power supply just to see if uh, it triggers. We'll see about that later. And we're going to plug this in. And let's hope nothing blows up. Okay, power power. Ooh, and a pretty picture of a car. No, that's not what I own. That's a stock photo. What is this drawing so far? Nothing for power. Nah, nothing. Like a tenth of an amp while it's doing nothing. Now the battery has to be charged in this as well. Um, a lot of feedback hum from my power supply. So, we know that uh, front camera's working. There it is. Let's uh, press this button here, see if we can get the rear camera to come on. Oh, there's the rear camera. Let's see what we're pointing at. Hey, there it is. Let's see if we press it again, if it switches front and rear. No, nope, didn't do nothing that time. Uh, okay, I see. It's, uh... Hey. And it's not doing anything. It's keeping it in the uh, top right corner. It's not switching around. That's okay. Uh, what is that? Uh, that's the microphone off and on button, it looks like, for this particular case. Again, it's a multifunction, perhaps. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to hold this closer to the camera so you can maybe see it. It has a time date stamp on the bottom. I'll have to set that. Uh, it is running right now. And the rear camera is going. I mean, I, I really can't test what this is. It does seem to pick up the characters pretty well. Uh, nighttime is going to be the big test, which I'm assuming it's going to fail miserably at that point. Let's see if I push this again. Oh, that brings up the menu. So, the menu. Video quality, 1080. Uh, 8 megapixel loop recording. So that means uh, it creates several small videos, not one long video in your car. That makes them manageable. Uh, and there's probably different settings. If I hit OK, there's two, one, two, three, and off. I don't know why you would want off, but two minutes is fine. Motion detection. Uh, I believe, as I mentioned, this has a battery in it. So what will happen is uh, when you turn off power to the car, this will probably let it run for a period of time. Uh, you could turn off and on motion detection. I'll probably just leave it off. It's good if you're in a parking lot, you know, you leave your car there a lot. You could probably hardwire this kit in. Uh, white balance, auto, I'm fine with that. Sharpness, normal. Exposure. Uh, if you have a tinted uh, top part of your windshield or you have some additional tint, I do in my car. Um, boot record. Uh, okay, don't know. Screen saver is off. Um, I think that's a matter of how long the screen stays on for after the fact. Uh, auto power off is off. And I want this to auto power off after, let's say, three minutes. And that's it. Oh, no, finally, record audio. That's fine. Parking monitor. Parking monitor. Oh, Jesus. What am I doing here? Exposure, boot record, screensaver. Uh, auto power off after three minutes. So it's the fault off record. Audio, obviously. Parking monitor. That's where, if you turn it on, it'll. Uh, if it senses motion, it'll record it, maybe for uh, uh, parking hits or whatever. You know, park G sensor. I don't know why that would be off. Uh, 2G, 4G, 8G. So 2G is the most sensitive. You know, if you slam your door, it might lock a recording. Probably not. It's 2, 4, 8, and that's it. But uh, we could turn it on to 2 for now. Another sense is date and time. We'll have to set that. Language, English. Date stamp, we'll want that. Frequency, okay. 60, really good old US of A. Uh, format, that's a new card in there, so we're gonna format that. Please wait. 
default settings in the version. Um, that's about it for that. And again, so let's, um, how do we get out of here? Maybe if I click this power button? Nope. That just powered it off, which is not what I want to do. So let's power it back up. And we'll see if it starts recording automatically. Uh, yeah, it does. Now, this screen is supposed to shut off after a period of time. Okay, this button, that star, I saw a lock turn on. It must have locked that piece of video. So that star button must be the manual uh, lock that video clip. One of these all also allows you to take a picture, and I'll read more on that. And the other thing I want to test was the backup camera mode. So, um, we have video there. Of course, I have nothing to hold it up with. Let's see. I got something there. And the backup camera is hiding over here. And by the way, when I was in that picture mode, I didn't see anything that said to turn this upside down or right side up. So the way I'm looking at this is with the screw mount down, that's uh, proper orientation. So I'm actually going to put this on 12 volts, and what we're going to see is right now you see my tripod legs. What I want to see is if I put this to 12 volts, if um, it's going to put it in reverse mode. And there it is reverse mode not only that it's got the guidelines there i don't know if you can see that in the camera so now it's regular reverse mode and hey there you go so this might be good for something else i could hardwire the switch so uh, she could see what's in there but i also assume that this piece right here is really supposed to allow me to switch between front and back and it's not doing that i'm going to have to read up on that of why that is the case Alrighty. All right. Anyway, um, I think I'm going to cut this video here. Uh, the next time you see this video, it's going to be uh, installing in the vehicle or installed in the vehicle, and we'll take it for a test drive. Uh, if you found this video helpful, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing as well, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Talk to you later. Thanks.